Hey all here at OS Reviews. So with Windows 11 officially released to the public here in the busy month of Techtober, just wanted to share some of my impressions of using it so far. So anyways, in terms of system requirements to upgrade to a Windows 11 from an existing Windows 10 computer, which by the way is a free update, you have to meet certain specifications, including having at least four gigabytes of RAM, at least a dual core, one gigahertz processor or faster, and at least 64 gigs of storage. And as part of new security regulations. Microsoft is also suggesting now for the computer to have secure boot capable as well as having TPM version 2.0 as well as a display that is at least 720p. Now the display requirement in particular is a little bit strange because there's plenty of desktops and mini PCs which obviously don't have a display not to mention 7 inch or 8 inch tablets as well as just the ultra mobile computers which might be capable in terms of power to run the platform. So I think this one here might be just a less stringent requirement and more of a recommendation. Of course, there's plenty of reasons to consider upgrading to Windows 11. One of them is the countdown to end of life for Windows 10 has begun, and Windows 10, believe it or not, will be officially decommissioned in 2025. Aside from that, Windows 11 does have a bit more of an attractive UI overhaul compared to Windows 10 that we've been seeing for a while now. So if you want to try something new, it definitely looks a little bit more clean and elegant from a visual perspective. However, as many other reviewers have pointed out and folks have seen by now, it's mostly just an aesthetic difference. In terms of really the two new features, one of them is going to be support for running Android apps on Windows computers. The second one is slightly better optimization for gaming, but both of those are actually not available at launch with Windows 11. They will come in incremental updates down the line. So right now, again, in terms of features, almost nothing new compared to Windows 10. But we do have this all new UI that I wanted to talk a little bit more about. The taskbar, which is now centered on Windows 11, a lot more reminiscent of Mac OS. And as you open up additional programs, uh, for example, let's try and open up Chrome here, you'll see that it will then create a new shortcut that gets pushed further along here on the right. Aside from that, you'll find some new personalization in the form of new wallpapers and themes, like a dark theme that comes included out of the box now, which uh, looks pretty attractive and clean, I have to admit. Some of these included wallpapers with Windows 11 are quite vibrant and fresh. There's a few other ones, still a dark theme, but just again changing the way the background here is displayed. Of course, you're not limited to these, and any advanced user can always fine tweak them even more with custom wallpapers. These are just some of the default wallpapers that you'll get with a stock install of Windows 11. Otherwise, the start menu has also seen a new redesign, so it looks like this now, and it's, again, similar to even Chrome OS or Mac OS, can also be pretty easy to interact with if you have a touchscreen device, but still is easy enough to use with a cursor and mouse. So there's a universal search, and you can also find some pinned applications as your favorites, as well as some recommended apps. Now, the third section here down below allows you to hop between different desktops, which is also something that functionality wise is something you also had in Windows 10, but it was not as directly advertised by Microsoft, more of an advanced feature. Now it's going to be much easier to kind of find. And basically what this allows you to do is create additional spaces where you can open up different subsets or clusters of apps and programs. For example, if I'm using this first desktop just for work, I might have a few, um, let's say work related tabs in the browser as well as documents open, but then I can also switch into a new desktop where I can do gaming. And in here, I can have just my games which are open. From the start screen, there's also the ability to pull up these widgets. So this is a separate little panel now that takes sometimes a second to refresh, but afterwards you have the ability to check out things like weather, uh, news, photos, and other information that might be relevant to what you are interested in reading about, and this will automatically populate itself. You can also install additional widgets, and all of them will sit under this semi-transparent screen. You can't actually drag the widgets out onto this main home page. Although it's not necessarily anything new, uh, Windows has been flirting with widgets since the days of Windows Vista, and it wasn't super successful back then, so Microsoft scrapped it for a while, but we saw it teased in the later editions of Windows 10 updates. It just lived onto the right side of your screen, and you can kind of see the weather information at a glance right from the desktop, but if you clicked on that, you basically had all these tiles or widgets that are now doing pretty much the same thing on 
Windows 11. And then also built into Windows 11 now as something that takes the center spot is the Teams integration and support. So you can use this to obviously communicate, do video conferencing. Overall, it's not a bad idea, but I wouldn't say this is really a huge selling point or feature because Teams isn't something that every single person will use. And second of all, there's nothing stopping you from installing Teams. It's a free program on a Windows 10 computer and then just pinning it into your taskbar. So this really isn't a new feature, so to speak. Uh, it's just something that now gets installed on Windows out of the box. There's also your File Explorer, which also kind of shows off some of the slight differences with the visuals of the UI and uh, how these headers look have been just slightly revised. But you have the ability to disable notifications and pop-ups at certain hours in the day where you might be working and you don't want others to disturb you. So you can set this up and uh, have a bit more of granular control over focusing, uh, which is a nice idea as a kind of extra software trick that is now baked into the notification shade. And uh, there it is. Other elements though are pretty Pretty familiar we do have still the manager on the side which you can take a look at things like battery percentage remaining quite similar to aforementioned Chrome OS in my opinion, but everything is pretty intuitive to use and you can also adjust them using touch. The targets are relatively large and easy to hit on. So here's the Wi-Fi uh, connection screen, for example, the quick shortcut menu at least. And we can also turn on other things like accessibility, battery saving, change the brightness of the screen, the volume, and you can also further adjust these uh, quick launch shortcuts by hiding them or adding additional ones. Other observations being that the system setting now look like this, which has also been reamped in terms of the UI. Targets here and screens are just a little bit larger and easier to hit, and overall I like it. I think that it's pretty clean and attractive. And so it comes without surprise that performance is one area that I haven't really had any issues with even on day one. Everything still felt pretty snappy and responsive. Uh, no real complaints in terms of noticing any additional drops in the system performance compared to Windows 10. And I was still able to do things comfortably, didn't really notice things getting faster or slower. Uh, the first day when it was installed, I will point out that the battery life did seem to see a drop of around 20% compared to Windows 10, but that's pretty typical whenever you install a new OS version, even if you do it on a mobile phone, such as on iOS or Android, the first day or two it takes a bit of time for the system to do re-indexing and some magic behind the scenes to kind of recalibrate and set itself back up. So after about three or four days, it should then return and stabilize. Uh, one other thing I will point out though is if you hover over the window screen, you now have a few more presets in terms of snapping programs into place and splitting it onto one display. So for example, if I pick on this quadrant option and click there, I can split this paint app onto the side and pick up a different app, for example, there, and then something else entirely on the left and right sides. So I can get up to these four screens at once, making it a little bit easier just to organize and manage how the uh, overall apps work here. So this is kind of one other feature that has been added. If you are someone that likes to do a bit more of split screen multitasking, especially on a larger monitor, uh, this is gonna be a bit more convenient and so that's more or less it. At the end of the day, Windows 11, at least in its current state, is in more cases than not a redesign of the UI, just making things look a bit more clean and attractive. And I do definitely like the way it looks, um, especially with the kind of center taskbar, even if it takes a little bit of time to get used to, and uh, other things as well, such as the new wallpapers and some of the new settings that you get are a nice touch. Uh, of course, I do think that parts of it are still a little bit non-consistent, like certain apps and programs which haven't seen as big of an update do feel the same as before, um, as well as the fact that we do have a little bit of redundancy in some areas, like the aforementioned start menu having the universal search, but then we still have the same universal search icon on the side. And like with any new OS, uh, it definitely takes a bit of time to figure out if there's any uncompatibility with certain drivers or software uh, since it's completely new. So it will take a bit of time for any software company to patch up potential bugs which come out. For what it is, I do think that's a pretty promising UI and for better or for worse, it is something that we'll have to kind of live with, of course, at the end of the day. So thanks for watching this video. You can also share what your experience of Windows 11 has been so far in the comments below or if you are planning on holding off maybe for a little bit longer before upgrading just to see if Microsoft will patch some other updates um, in the coming months. But for now, that's been our video. Again, thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.